I wouldn't be able to function without my calendar app. In this video, I want to share the five guidelines that I use to keep myself organized inside of my calendar and manage my projects, my tasks, events, everything inside of one app. I use Google Calendar and have one main Google Calendar account, which I share all of my calendars to. So I have calendars on the Google Calendar account, but I don't like using Google Calendar on my computer. Most of my time is spent either writing inside of Obsidian, which is my writing app of choice, or on YouTube or on my computer doing something, and I don't want to have to use my mouse to click open the calendar, so I have an Alt-C global hotkey to bring up my calendar and my task list at the same time, all at the push of a hotkey on my computer. Another advantage you'll notice is on Google Calendar you have tasks, but tasks don't disappear from the calendar, and you have events, whereas inside of Morgan, which is the calendar app of choice that I personally use, I can tick things off, so scripting this video I have now done, it gives me some fireworks, which is nice, but it's now gone, so it doesn't clutter up my day view, so I know, actually, you know what, I've got some spare time. All of the things you really need with a calendar application you can do inside of the free plan of Morgan, but you could use TickTick or Todoist or literally any task manager that links with a calendar app. And that's why I use Morgan because it links the two together nicely for me. One of my biggest struggles using Google Calendar was I would forget to eat. When it was lunchtime, I didn't check my calendar regularly because I was clicking backwards and forwards to the tab. So I would forget to eat lunch. It would get to like half two, three o'clock and be like, oh, I haven't eaten yet. And my stomach's grumbling. I should probably go downstairs and eat something. And then dinner, I'm not that hungry so dinner's delayed and it just became a whole mess. Also in the last two years I've had to take medication for my eye for a long-term medical issue now and I forget to take my meds <laughs> with the calendar. I just forgot to take them because I didn't have a, a tick box or a, a thing that I could look to each morning. This could sound really bad but I tried using task list and it's almost like I needed a task list to check the task list to check that I've taken my medication because if I'm using Todoist I'm not looking at Todoist for the events that I have going on throughout the day because my events weren't on Todoist it's on my calendar so I needed to link to Todoist with my calendar which is where it worked which is obviously why syncing the task list and the calendar is really important for me but also there are other things that I want to make sure that I get done such as checking emails and for me personally going through my podcast list so any new episodes or Twitter or X threads or anything that I've bookmarked I want to get those sort of curated in some way at some point rather than it being a massive long list I need to deal with at some point. And if I have a look at my calendar and go to tomorrow, you can see these are all blocked out in blocked sections of times. These are in my task calendar. So when I double click, they're in my task calendar inside of Google, but they're in my task list of recurring. So it's, it's gray, basically means it's blocked. If I go up and make it a week view, you can see at the beginning of the day, I just have all of these blocked tasks. But then I also have lunch and I have exercise. I have the dog's meds to make sure I actually do the dog's meds as well as my own meds in the morning, then dinner. And then I have social time also scheduled in to make sure that I am being social with family and friends and the rest of it. They're just repeated daily or weekly tasks that go throughout my week that appear and I don't have to think about them because they are always there at the same time and I do them then or they stay on my calendar day until I've ticked them off so I can do them later on in the day. Obviously meds, I need to do them at the right times, but emails, I could do them later if I wanted to. Now, scheduling something in and actually starting when the scheduled time is there I, I I can't do with fast rules on that if it starts at 12 that doesn't mean I'm actually starting at 12 it likely means I'm doing some sort of warm-up at maybe 5-2 or 5 past but I'm not great with hard deadlines unless it's a meeting that I need to be at and when I say warm-up I literally mean like a warm-up you would do in sports or activities my background is in sports coaching and strength and conditioning so I plan my calendar as I would periodize a training program for an elite athlete there are sessions throughout the day that I turn up to that I've planned to do certain things for. I mean, the maintaining, enhancing, or trying to work on certain skills within those sessions. And when you start a session, whatever session you're doing in sport, you have a warm up. The point of the warm up to increase your level of performance. And so when I'm doing editing, for example, I maybe watch some videos about the editing style or with the editing style I'm looking to do, or writing. Maybe I'll read an article or read a blog or read Twitter for a couple of minutes to see what people are saying or get get myself thinking about the skill that it is I'm about to I'm about to practice now looking at my calendar you don't see any of those warm-ups scheduled in but I do have the session scheduled in and the session is two hours like you're not going to do a session you're not going to practice a skill for longer than two hours most of the time for me because I will end up doing something else or I will just be too tired to continue going so I have the session time built in and that session time like you would going to a sports club or wherever you have the first five ten minutes as a warm-up then you do the session whatever the session plan is and then you have your your cool down at the end my cool down being a break between the two sessions. 
However, with meetings, you can see I have a buffer time in here, which is my warm up. I do this automatically with Morgan. You can see it's buffer via Morgan. You could do this with other calendar apps. You could do it manually. There are lots of different ways. Or you could just look at it and go, oh, uh, I'm going to set a 15 minute notification for this meeting. So I know 15 minutes before I need to prepare. But as Morgan serves as my scheduling tool as well. So if someone wants to book a time with me or call with me, you can. There's going to be a link in the description below, I'm sure. You can just book a time. We'll have a chat and that will come into Morgan automatically. Other apps do that as well. So it's not just Morgan, but it just makes it easier if everything's in one place. For project management, I have tried so many different things. I used Notion years ago. I used Notion for about three years and did all my project management in there while I was at university. It worked, but I was struggling because I'd have to put it on my calendar and then go back to Notion and then put the tasks in Notion as well and put the notes inside of Notion. But then the notes, some of the notes needed to be in my calendar. So I knew when to do it. Due dates and schedule dates were also a bit of a pain. Then when looking at the calendar in Inside of Notion or inside of Obsidian or Asana or ClickUp or any of the project manager apps that I've used, I had the deadline and I had the, the project over wherever it was due on the calendar. But what really helped me manage my time with my projects is if I go to the calendar set three for planning and M month view, you can see I now have all of my projects in, in the week or in the times that I want to do them. So I can see at a glance how many projects I'm doing at once. So if I go to today, I can see I'm actually doing five projects. When I push on calendar set one, now I can see everything that's going on. This is red, so I know that's related to that project. That's a, an ideal section, which I'll go through in a second. And this is also red, so that's related to that project. So this purple project, I'm not doing anything today, but I know it's currently active. And the same with these three yellow projects. And seeing those projects actually helps me manage why I may be feeling a little bit busy because I'm actually doing five projects, even though today I'm only doing one. I have five that are sort of ongoing. So when it comes towards the end of the week and those do start being ticked off, I can feel lighter, but maybe I'll add another project. If this bar at the top is more than five, I know I'm probably doing too many things at once. So instead of hiding it via the deadline, so just showing my YouTube projects list or my writings project list, I can see all of my projects so I know I don't overbook myself essentially. Which ties into how I decide what to do when. Because the block time is obvious, like lunch you want it roughly in the middle of the day, dinner you want it later, meds I need to do it in the morning, there are time slots for that. But when I'm doing a video, when do I want to record? Well, I want to record in good lighting. So that has a rough time slot between two and six. But when I'm writing, when do I want to do the writing for that project or this project? I, well, that's a decision. When do I want to do the editing? That's another decision I need to make. And I need to make those decisions constantly throughout the week, which I don't want to have to do. I do know in an ideal world, I'd like to keep all of the tasks that are similar together. So writing and writing and then maybe editing split up. But that doesn't work all the time. So I I need an ideal plan. And that is exactly what this calendar is. If I double click, you can see it's an ideal calendar. It is just a calendar on my calendar where if I go to the week view, you can see this is writing. It's in the ideal calendar. This is another writing slot. So they are just ideal slots of what I want to be doing. And I deliberately didn't plan this so I can show you how I do this. I've moved shopping from today to tomorrow because I'm going shopping tomorrow instead. But that means I don't have as much time for editing. If I look up at my projects, I can see I need to be editing this video. There's a yellow square box, so I know it's going to be in the yellow task list. There's the project. It's due on Saturday, so I'm just going to drag that in and plonk it on top. And now I can tick off that ideal calendar slot because I've scheduled something in the time. Some things I like about Morgan is I have my Obsidian file linked. So all of the notes, so the written script is inside of there, easy accessible. You could do that with Notion or whatever app you're using. I also have an estimate time, two hours. That is why it came out in, in a two hour slot because I work in two hour blocks. The due date of this project is the 9th of the 3rd and that's why it's coming out as Saturday, but that's the due date. The actual schedule date is slightly different inside of Morgan because you can see I've got multiple sessions. So I've got the slot on Tuesday, but now I can just drag it also to Wednesday and Thursday and Friday. Then I'll tick off those ideal planning sessions. And something else I like about Morgan is I don't need to add a subtask or anything. I can just come into this task and change the name and say basically cuts and then just save it. So now I have the base cuts inside of this section. And then I know this is just another part. So I can do the granular if I want, but I don't need to worry about that when I'm planning. And you may notice the teacher assault has multiple sessions already in it. And that's because it is up here. It's at the top. And if I go to the month view with the planning, you can see it's there. It's scripting, but then I'm also editing there. So there's already two sessions of this task inside of my calendar, but there for planning. 
But what I want to do now is actually do the thing. So if I click, you can see we've got the two hours estimate, which means it's going to bring a two hour block in, which writing. And then I'll do the same thing for the other project, which leaves me with some space down here to put in anything else that I want to do. I mentioned avoiding subtasks and granular tasks because what I found is the more granular I get with the task, the bigger the list gets. And the more I just don't like looking at my task list and looking at all the things I need to do. So I don't bother with all of the small granular tasks because I'm going to get them done if I'm going to get the project done anyway, which is why I use the main action to put into my calendar. And then I just add whatever specifics if I need specifics in there. Most of the time, I don't I just have that block and then just carry on with whatever it is that I'm doing I'm not going to say edit this part of the timeline I'm just going to go to the timeline and figure out okay that's where I'm at let's carry on but of course there are small granular tasks that you want to make sure you get done or things you need to do because you've remembered in the shower or when walking the dog or whatever it is and that goes for me inside of the inbox in Morgan but it can go in any sort of inbox wherever it is that you're using but I don't give those a schedule date I give those a due date so here, Sunday, that's the due date of this small granular task being smart video. This is a granular task of something that I want to go through for another video project. And you can see there's a due date. But there are other things that I thought of that aren't specifically due. Like I don't have to do them, but I should probably do them. And they are scheduled. So this one has a schedule date for meds that I need to pick them up from the doctors that can be done at any point this week. So I have them scheduled there. But if I don't pick them up later, then I'll just drag it to whenever's <laughs> next appropriate so all the small granular tasks are just my inbox tasks there are no granular tasks inside of my projects or managing projects because it's just the project is continuing with the project now while I'm writing and researching there are going to be lots of actions that I want to get done but that's not inside of my calendar because that's going to fill out my calendar far too much which is where I keep all of my writing my researching and my actual thinking process inside of obsidian and if you want to know how I write then you can check out this video over here